G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we have a massive LPS tank to show you. We're going to do a service on this tank, but it's a pretty incredible tank. It's almost as big as the lounge room in which it's situated. So let's get to it. So we've had a really early start this morning. Uh, I got up at, I think it was 4.30 to leave by 5 o'clock to hit a 6 o'clock high tide. So I've gone down to the Gold Coast and I've actually filled up two full IBCs. Uh, they're a thousand litres each, so we've got 2,000 litres of water which we've collected on the high tide from the Gold Coast Seaway. And I've done so just very basically with a generator and a large pump. It's not the fastest way to collect water, but it's a very clean and very easy way. So we filled up the IBCs. There's a little bit of water in the one on the back of the Colorado. And so uh, we've got all this water ready to go. It's beautiful and clean. And when you see this tank, you'll understand why we need such a large amount of water to do this water change. So we'll go have a look at the tank and we'll do a service. So this is our job today, a 1400 litre, uh, 370 gallon. Uh, LPS tank with lots of hammers, lots of torches, lots of gonies. It's a beautiful tank. So let's just spend a moment to have a look at it before we do the service. Here it is. So one of the good things about doing this job is that Sam and Randall keep the glass really clean. They use a, a magnet cleaner to get the bulk of the algae off the glass. And so all I need to do when I come to service this tank is just to clean up around the edges. And the perfect thing for that is a razor. And so we have these cool little uh, razor holders that we sell at Gallery Aquatica. And they're perfect for the more difficult algae close to the silicon seals. So, the way I use it, so every time I do this, I always use a new blade. The blades get very rusty very quickly, of course, and if you're using a new blade, you can be sure that it won't scratch the glass and it will clean the algae off beautifully. Saves a lot of time. So as you can see, this tank is lit by four Aqua Illumination Hydro 52 hyperdrives. And it's a really good demonstration as to how good the spread of these lights is. That the four units are able to provide a really good light spread for such a big tank. What I really like about the way this has been set up is that uh, Sam and Randall have created a customized uh, rail for the, the light units. It's two pieces of aluminium angle and they're positioned uh, perfectly so that the Hydro 52 units sit beautifully just inside the rail. Now, as you can see, the rail is mounted on this frame. And so one of the things which is really interesting about this tank is the return flow. You can see we have a number of these inlets. And so the return pump is pumping through each of these, which are all individually adjustable with the ball valves. And so this allows for really good uh, manipulation of the flow so that we've got water passing in through all of the, the rock work, the caves and the overhangs. 
So let's have a look at the return pump and then we'll look at the rest of the flow in the tank. So we're on the side that you'd have to call the back of the tank. Being a peninsula tank, it's not really a true, true back, um, but uh, it's definitely the side that you don't see as much. And so we're down with the return pump and for this, this tank, we're running a Varios, uh, an Octo Varios 8. And one of the great things about these, wave, uh, these return pumps is that not only can you control the flow, there's a feed mode, but you can also very easily turn off the pump. And that's one of the, uh, it, it might seem like a small point, but when you're doing uh, maintenance on a service and you want uh, a service on a tank, you want to be able to easily turn off the return pump when the time comes. And with this one, it's just one button. So this is feeding up into that manifold with all those different points. And uh, given that there's so many points that it goes back into the tank, we really need a strong pump like this Varios to do the job. So we've looked at the flow that's provided from the return pump with its multiple points going into the tank. But the rest of the circulation for this tank is provided by pretty much two guys and a little miscellaneous wave maker. And so the reason why guys are perfect for this tank is because of the, the broad spread of flow that they provide and they give excellent rippling and agitation of the surface of the water. Now this is important so that you get good oxygen diffusion into the tank and it also provides uh, an overall good circulation of the water in the tank. So these wave makers are absolutely perfect for the dimensions of this tank. So as you can see, this tank is massive. It is eight feet long and three feet wide. It's two feet tall. And so it's an excellent size tank for lots of surface area, for lots of corals, and it's perfect for corals like LPS. This tank has an almost full length calfo, which provides excellent pull of the water surface. And so at no point is there ever any stagnant water patches on the surface. We've got the, uh, the weir coming out at the moment, but uh, it's a, a really good system, a really good size, and it's absolutely perfect for uh, Sam and Randall's coral of choice, which are large polyp stony corals. So from the CALFO, water drains down these two drainage pipes into the sump. Now the sump on this tank is six feet by two feet wide. It's a very large sump. And after the water drains into the sump, it goes through a pre-filter, which we're yet to clean, and through the NIOS 220 skimmer. This skimmer has a drainage line, which is hard to see, but down the back there, well, it's come off now. So it actually drains down through the floor into a collection uh, drum. It's a 20 litre collection drum downstairs. Water then passes through a massive amount of biological media. So we've got Ciparax in this section, and this is really polishing off all the organics. It then moves through another skimmer, through a UV steriliser, there's a keto reactor. The dosing pump feeds in at this point and then basically back through a refugium and up into the tank. So there's a large number of nutrient export systems operating on this tank. And that's mainly because of the, the very large biomass of the system. So we'll have a look at the dosing pump and then we'll have a closer look at some of the corals up the top. So the dosing setup is fairly simple. The big three, calcium, KH and mag, are set up on the dosing pump and these going in with the dosing pump allows for very consistent levels and trace elements are dosed just manually, just with the coral essentials. Um, at the moment, we're just at four drops per day of A, B and C and the coral essentials, amino acids and vitamins are also dosed. So before we do the water change on this system, I'm just doing a bit of a gravel back. You can see that there's a bit of uh, bacterial silt which is trapped in the substrate and by doing a gravel vac this just removes that phosphate trap and makes the, uh, the sand a bit whiter. It helps control algae which is growing on the sand as well. So we'll just do a quick gravel vac and then we'll start the water change. So we've just started draining the tank 
and we're using this particularly large drainage hose so that we can very quickly drain the water and most importantly we have our return hose set up so that as soon as we're ready we just hit the power turn on the valve and hit the power and we'll be filling back up again so there won't be any period in between the draining and the filling that we're running around trying to put hoses together to fill the tank uh, now that's particularly important with this type of tank because some of these hammers and torches and gonies are going to be out of the water once we're finished uh, draining. So we'll drain the tank and then we'll hit the go button on the return line. Okay, so I'm going to break the siphon on the drain. So that has now stopped. I'll sit it here for the time being and I'll turn this on. So we've finished filling up the tank, so I'll take out our return line. It actually worked out perfect that the amount of water we had in the IBC was the exact amount that we drained out of the tank. So our running level is perfect. All we have to do now is put away the hose, we'll just sort of level out the sand a little bit, we'll turn all the uh, wave makers back on. Um, and that will be the job done for today. Uh, I'll just point out a couple of things. You might have noticed that there's a, uh, it's actually an old Vitalis um, packet of algae grazers and um, it's a, a makeshift bristle worm trap. You can see there's a couple of straws poking out of it. The idea is that the bristle worms go in through the straws, uh, attracted by the bait in the container. Um, don't know how many it's actually catching. I'd probably invest in a $12 bristle worm trap, but um, Anyway, everything is looking good. The, uh, the corals are a little bit uh, closed up. They're not as open as they would be normally in uh, the peak of the day. It's partly because of the, the water change and partly because we'd, we've done this job first thing in the morning. Uh, and so we've taken our natural seawater from the Gold Coast at the, the cleanest spot that we know. We've uh, done our water change and the tank will look absolutely sensational tomorrow. Um, so this is this is our job for today. Thank you so much for watching um, and happy reefing guys. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.